This segment is sponsored by the Richmond Sentinel, providing news, entertainment, and human interest stories in print and online. Marcia Liedemann is an award-winning journalist. She is the uh, Western Arts uh, reporter, correspondent for the Globe and Mail. She has spent years at CBC as an anchor, as a reporter, as a talk show host. Uh, she is also the child of Holocaust survivors. Her latest book debut, doing very well, is called Kiss the Red Stairs, The Holocaust Once Removed. She is also a colleague of mine from the Vancouver Critics Circle. It is a great pleasure to have you here, Marsha Liederman. Thank you so much for inviting me. You're quite oh, welcome. Very excited having you here. Congratulations on the success of your book. Thank you. Uh, we're, we're loving it. And um, there's a quote in the book, I'm going to jump right into it, that really kind of sums up the book, I would say. And the horrific past that I haven't lived but that I think lives in me. Uh, very, yeah, poignant. How did the book come about? Well, that's a great quote that you've just chosen because it is sort of the, like, it's the thesis statement, I guess, for the book because, well, my parents were Holocaust survivors, as you mentioned. My mother survived Auschwitz. My father survived uh, a work camp in the ghetto and survived near execution and bribed a guard and managed to live. Uh, so there's a lot of trauma in their lives. And at some point in my life, it was presented to me that perhaps the trauma that they had experienced was somehow affecting me and my moods and the way I saw the world and the way I dealt with people. And I was a bit dismissive of that to begin with, but in recent years I've taken a very deep dive into this question of intergenerational trauma and, you know, something that you haven't lived but lives in you. And uh, I believe that yes, it does live in me in some ways. We were talking about this before we went on camera, our crew here about how that generation where and talk a lot about, about it. And you had your mom on, on your radio show back in 1998, I believe. Um, but reading about your parents, and there's so much is just momentary little pieces of luck, humanity of some people. And I don't want to get into details. I, want to, I don't want to spoil it for our, our viewers who will pick it up. But just like, for example, your father, who is who was just looking for help from a city official in Poland, and it's his wife who shows the humanity. Your mom getting to be a laborer, like that's, that's a reward, but it saves her life. Talk about how, did, did that stuff ever really get discussed in depth? I said before that it, they didn't really talk about it. So they did actually talk about what happened to them, but it wasn't like they sat us down and said, children, gather round, we're going to tell you the horrific stories of our wartime experiences. It was more, it would come out in little drips and, and drabs, like the, uh, often around the question of food. If we didn't want to eat something, we heard about how little food they had during the war. And it was always presented that way during the war. It was almost this um, cloud that lived over us, but that we maybe didn't understand that well. What I had to do in the end as I was writing this book is because I didn't ask them enough questions, because I never got the sequence from A to Z, I had to piece it together through what I remembered, what my sisters remembered, which was a lot more than I had remembered, and some documents that we could find, some things that they had left, and the odd interview that my mother had done. And I felt like I was a detective into my own family history. Yeah, you certainly yeah. were. And you know, you, you delve into um, epigenetics too, which I imagine is going to be facing a lot of people in the next few generations with a lot of the wartime stuff that's happening now. Talk a little bit about how you uncovered that to be a part of uh, this book. Sure. So in let's say the 1960s, just to go back a little bit, there became some awareness that children of Holocaust survivors might be suffering some um, problems that might be related to what had happened to their parents. And the thinking was that the parents had been so traumatized that their parenting skills were compromised and thus the children were affected, which I believe to be true. But around 2015, there was a very large, not a very large, but there was a very well publicized study that came out that looked at this subject 
at the biological level. And there were these headlines that said, children of Holocaust survivors inherit parents' trauma. Children of Holocaust survivors have trouble bouncing back from trauma. And I was reading these headlines and thinking, oh my goodness, is that me? Is that why I've been having some troubles in my life? And the thinking is that, yes, I mean, at least some studies have shown that there is a mark that is left on the person who's traumatized by the Holocaust or war or many other things, residential schools, and that is passed down um, genetically to the offspring and perhaps beyond that. You talk about your mom being in Auschwitz, Treblinka, uh, Berger Belsen, or no, just? Uh, Buchenwald. Buchenwald, thank but you. Treblinka is where all my grandparents were murdered. Okay, um, but the way your parents somehow in the midst of all this horror and post-World War chaos meet, uh, give us a few seconds of that. Sure. It's beautiful. It is, it's really amazing. My mother was on a death march and was liberated by the U.S. Army on April 1st, 1945. It was Easter Sunday and it was Passover. She was in a town called Kaunitz, Germany. My father had survived the last two and a half years of the war living on a farm about 60 kilometers away from there, pretending to be a Catholic named Tadeusz Rednicki, and his real name was Jacob Laterman. Uh, he had these false papers, and he heard that hundreds of Jewish women had been liberated in this place, Kaunitz. He wanted to find his sister, Devora. He went looking for his sister. Unfortunately, his sister had been murdered at Treblinka, but he met my mom and um, he met her in the hospital, weirdly, because he was visiting a friend and she had been in a motorcycle accident. I guess she was having fun after <laughs> being liberated yeah. and my God, she deserved it. Uh, and my mother had, her face was bandaged up the whole time he got to know her, but they fell in love that way. And uh, the bandages came off and, and the love continued to spark and they got married in Germany and had their first of three daughters in Germany. Almost like a pen pal, <laughs> <laughs> sort of. <laughs> uh, hey, uh, congratulations on this. Um, and, uh, it's great, as you mentioned in the, uh, the preface of the book, that you have a 13-year-old son, Jacob. This is kind of a, a documentation for him because you didn't have that. So this is, this is wonderful. So we'll hold this up here. Here's the book from Marsha right there. Look for it. Um, is there a website? where people can find out more information? Yeah, well, they can go to my website, marshaliederman.ca, or they could go to the Penguin Random House Canada website. There it is, look for the brand. The book just came out this past spring. Uh, Marsha, thank you for joining us on the show. Congratulations on this great book, continued success. Thank you, thanks so much for having oh, me. Good Our to have pleasure. you. This segment was sponsored by the Richmond Sentinel, providing news, entertainment, and human interest stories in print and online.